There are a lot of examples of random processes from our daily lives, like rolling a die, tossing a coin, and a lot more. But have you ever wondered if predicting the result of these processes was possible? Are these processes truly random? In language, anything that merely appears to be unpredictable or lacking a pattern or a reason behind it is termed as a random process. But in scientific terms, for something to be random, it should be truly unpredictable. That is, it should not have any higher laws that govern its result. All the other processes which only appear to be random to the human brain are called pseudo-random processes. For example, this sequence of numbers might first appear to be random, but once you find the relation between them, they are not random anymore. This is an example of a pseudo-random sequence. Now let's dig a little deeper into the topic. During the period of classical physics, that is before the 20th century, the situation appeared to be quite simple. In classical physics, all laws were deterministic into the past as well as into the future. What this means is that by knowing the current state of an object and the surrounding conditions, the object's past and future can be exactly predicted if proper calculations are performed. You can verify that this is true in the case of Newtonian mechanics, which is also a classical theory. By knowing the position and momentum of an object and the surrounding conditions, we can calculate where it came from and where it will go. In physics, this is just called finding the trajectory of an object. At this point, you might start wondering about the things that are supposed to be random, like the dice used for gambling or a coin toss that begins a cricket match. It's true that classical physics states that nothing can be truly random, but the outcome of a die depends on so many factors that it is incomprehensible for human brains. Last number of factors result in a very high degree of apparent randomness, which is seen in many natural and day-to-day -day processes. But a lot of factors are still not enough for modern day technology. In 2012, some scientists from the American Institute of Physics were able to predict the outcome of a die by precise measurement of initial conditions. And things like this have been done a lot of times. So the point is, according to classical mechanics, nothing was truly random and it seemed pretty fair. But things changed in the 20th century when physicists began investigating smaller length scales, that of the size of an atom. It was observed that the behavior of subatomic particles was very different from the larger size things up here and could not be explained by classical physics. This led to the development of the infamous quantum mechanics by various scientists over the course of many years. Today quantum mechanics is a consistent theory and it has changed a lot of things about how physicists interpret reality. And now let's see how it also forbids a deterministic model of the universe. In quantum mechanics, everything is described using equations of waves or wave packets obtained by solving Schrodinger's wave equation. Mathematical operations are performed on these waves to obtain information about the physical system. The waves themselves represent the probability, or the probability density to be more precise, of the concerned particle being located at a particular point, if an attempt to measure its position is made. However, before the measurement, its location is uncertain, and there is no way to predict its exact position, no matter what method is used. Only the probability can be known. This shows how uncertainty is embedded into the very heart of this theory. A better explanation to the uncertainty is given by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that states that the position and the velocity of an object cannot be both measured exactly at the same time, even in theory. The concepts of exact position and exact velocity together have no meaning in nature. No matter what measuring method is used, reality will adjust in such a way that knowing both these quantities together will be impossible. Hence, the uncertainty in the location or the momentum is not just the incapability of our measuring or calculating method, but it is the true fundamental nature of reality. And this has been verified by several experimental methods for the subatomic scale over the course of history. That was not a very thorough definition of quantum mechanics, but it will however suffice for our discussion here. We have just seen that the uh, subatomic world is uncertain at a very fundamental level and that it is not deterministic. Therefore, it should be filled with randomness. This randomness can be verified in many phenomena that take place on the smaller scale. One prominent example is radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is the process by which unstable atomic nuclei gradually decay into 
more stable nuclei by emitting particles or radiation. For example, uranium-235 nucleus has the tendency to emit an alpha particle and transform into a thorium-231 nucleus. For a large number of nuclei, the law of radioactive decay can predict the amount of nuclei decaying in a particular time. But this is only a statistical treatment. If you take a single uranium-235 nucleus, you will never be able to predict when it will decay. Its probability of decaying at a particular time is random. Processes like this which are fundamentally random and can only be analyzed statistically are called stochastic processes. The law of radioactive decay shows that the rate of decay of a large number of nuclei does decrease with time but it still goes on forever. So uh, while some nuclei might decay at the very instant you start observing them, but some others in the same sample might decay after a million years when you are long gone. Now let's come back from the subatomic realm to our own world up here. When quantum mechanics is applied to the objects of the larger scale, it reproduces the equations of classical mechanics and it can be concluded that classical mechanics is only an approximation of quantum mechanics for larger lengths. The uncertainty is present in our length scale too, but it is very small to affect the actual results. What classical mechanics does is that it neglects the uncertainty completely as if it didn't exist at all. And this produces an illusion of a deterministic world, while it is only approximately deterministic at a larger scale. Now let's be real. The idea of a random universe is bizarre. Many physicists could never agree to it, including Einstein, who had himself contributed to initial developments in quantum mechanics. And there is still a lot of skepticism on the universe being fundamentally random, despite quantum mechanics being one of the most successful theories in physics. Some think that there might be higher deterministic laws that rule quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics could just be an approximation of those laws. Although until now no evidence suggesting things like that has been obtained and a majority of scientists have made their peace with a fundamentally random reality. <laughs>